We out of red in England. All the boy, yeah, you know it's hype train FC. Modern ambition, we got blue and gold in our kit. Plus, you know we the champs of the league. And we don't quit. Started from rest, who's scared of sport? We ain't taking it light. You know it's real. From fantasy to the field, you better believe that hype. Yeah, yeah. Welcome one and all aboard the home of Hype Train FC on our dedicated YouTube channel. The date was Saturday the 25th of November 2023 with the team in Saturday League action in the last 16 of the East Berkshire Football League's League Cup. The competition featuring all teams in the EBFL structure with the team making a very short trip to Palmer Park in Reading to take on Division 1 outfit FC Riverside. This latest away day was a follow up to our 4-2 away win against Real Saracens at the Cherry Orchard in the first round this past September and it it was also the first time we faced a Riverside team in any form of competition. Just before we go through the team, we do want to set the scene for today's game. Riverside failed to organise the league appointed referee for the game, which resulted in the game bordering on being a farce at times. Not only was there a 25 minute delay to the start of the game, as a result we were scrambling about what to do. We were also losing precious daylight at 2pm on a Saturday in late November, and as the home team couldn't accept any decision in the first half, when we opted to officiate the first half, We'd encourage them to read the basic laws of football in the future. We'd like to thank the volunteers who stepped up on either side of the half to officiate the game on the day nonetheless. You both did terrific jobs in the circumstance. As for the team on the day, the host Riverside win an all-green strip whilst ourselves at Hype Train were on our home navy blue. In goal we had Robert Hostin and ahead of him we had a defensive line that consisted of Anwar Amanga, Josh Robertson, Callum Gibbons and Joe Sawyer. We had a midfield trio of Jazz Lapar, Ben Hynow and Wakar Janjua with width that wide for the team offered by John Watkins on the left and Mitchell Saunders on the right with Phil Newport in attack whilst among the substitutes bench we had Luke Follington and Chris Marshall to call upon. Just a bit of a taster of what Riverside were pulling in the game here. There was a bit of miscommunication on all fronts. Riverside here have their player that's attacking before an eventual through ball goes through to the left midfielder who was out of play. He drew Callum out, which means that he was in an offside position. They actually think that they've scored in this instance, though the play is eventually brought back for offside. With the sun in our eyes, Riverside is setting up for a free kick with their goalkeeper in purple playing a short ball to one of his centre-back partners. There's a ball that's played out to another centre-back and he's just decided to thump it but coming into shot was Phil Newport. The number nine has tucked the ball in the back of the net for the first time of asking. He's gone down, he's taken one to the midriff as the team take a 1-0 lead. Starting now with a long ball forward that is flicked on to a player at the back post in an offside position. They've eventually stuck the ball in the net. We've all stopped because it's so obvious he's offside. What this leads to is just an inappropriate moment for the host team. They are unwilling to accept the result. Our liner was throwing the flag on the floor because of the constant abuse he's been given in the first 10 minutes. He wasn't happy with it and neither were we. What we're about to show you is the clear offside here when the ball is flicked over. So let's bring that up on the screen now. Now, when the flick on happens, the player is about four or five yards inside the box, unmarked, nobody's around him, and this isn't the first time it happens all game. They just couldn't accept any decision, and they, what they should have done is just organise the referee for the game. Whilst we're on the topic of offside goals, let's go into one here that starts with an error by myself in goal. We've played the ball back into myself, Rob, in goal. I've slipped over and allowed Riverside a two-on-one. But what the player's done, he's kicked the ball forward into a player who's forward offside. They're completely unsure about the offside rule here. It's clearly offside and they protested again, but the game stays at 1-0. I'm thankful to switch gears now at the other end of the pitch with Mitchell doing well to put the squeeze on the team in green here as we've won the ball high up the pitch here. Jazz and Wakar have done well to win the ball and Phil now has the ball. He plays the ball into Ben and Ben's shot against the Sun is just wide of the mark. Unlucky. 
Time now for Riverside's first legitimate chance in the game and it starts when they've picked up the ball in a central area. They ping the ball out right to their midfielder here who's decided to cut inside. There's some nice little interplay before they eventually take a shot but then a second shot comes in and it dribbles wide around six yards wide of goal. Another chance for the host team now and I must admit we were struggling to get into the game not only due to the delay but because the pitch was awful and the conditions were freezing it was just a really difficult game to get into here and it just means that with moments like this we're having to save one-on-ones as we're looking to get into the game at 1-0. End to end so far and that's going to continue throughout the first half as the ball goes out to Joe Sawyer at right back. He's got a lot of time to look up and he finds Jazz in midfield. Jazz turns up and he's got time to play a nice one-two there with Phil. Phil eventually gets into the penalty area though the Riverside goalkeeper who was terrific on the day makes a good save. We've resumed play now with Joe Sawyer picking up the ball with a throw in on the far side. The ball goes into the feet of Ben here against the sun. What you can see is Ben cut the ball back for John Watkins who a few yards out from goal has missed it. What we're going to do here for John's benefit alone is just zoom in a little bit to see that he's missed a sitter but it's another big chance for the team. A lively game of chances indeed for the team and now let's pick up with the play out on the left with Anwar having time on the ball. We're deciding to work the ball nice and easy. Phil chips the ball into Ben. Ben has shrugged off his player well and drawn another good save from the keeper. Let's pick up play on the far side of the pitch now as the team are in a battle to win the ball back with Anwar doing well at left back to intercept the ball. He plays the ball infield to Wakar. He's heard Phil call on the left hand side and he plays an excellent ball through to beat the offside trap and Phil on the first time of asking has buried the shot into the back of the net but as you're about to see in the next clip you wouldn't believe it. This happened over the course of three or four minutes. Riverside just could not accept that Phil had beaten the offside trap. You can go back and pause on the moment Wakar kicks the ball. Phil's onside. It's a good goal and the team have a 2-0 lead. The ball is in the hand of the Riverside goalkeeper as he's looking to go long here. There's a good kick that goes into the middle of the park but Jazz does well to stop the ball dead. He plays the ball out left again to John Watkins here who has decided to cross the ball in. The cross is good as it goes out to Wakar after a defensive block. He puts the ball over the player and it's saved by the keeper. We're verging on half time now with the ball out left for a throw in and I must admit it was a perfect opportunity for the team to regroup. It was a very testing first half for the boys here as we have Anwar throw the ball down to Mitchell. He runs to the byline, he beats a couple of men, he lays the ball back for Phil to complete a first half hat trick on the stroke of half time. The team have a 3-0 lead and that was a goal you couldn't put the flag up against. <laughs> Entering the second half, we're going to start with the Riverside goalkeeper playing a short goal kick to one of his centre backs, but the ball is loose after a giveaway and Phil, inside the penalty area, has shot at goal, but the Riverside goalkeeper here has made one hell of a save to keep the game at three. Next up, the ball is high and in the air and it gives Riverside an opportunity to bring the ball down here as they've collected the ball on the left-hand side of the pitch. Their player in midfield, who had some good feet on the day, has decided to test himself for a mage for a first time, though the ball is easily collected. Another chance for Riverside and it starts when they're able to win back possession of the ball and there's some nice interplay that goes over our defensive line here. I've decided to come rushing out of goal but Josh Robertson is on hand to make sure that there's no chance of Riverside getting their goal. 
On the right side of the pitch, Jazz has done well here to break the lines of the Riverside team as we're moving the ball forward here. Riverside have only deflected the ball out for a quick throw in which the team have decided to take early. Phil Newport is in the box. He's rounded the goalkeeper, though his eventual shot is blocked well. The team are now defending a throw in on the left hand side with Riverside taking some time to get the ball back into play here. As we can see, the ball is played in early to the feet of one of their midfielders who's able to turn. For a second time, he's tried his shot from range, though unequal to his efforts. On the far side of the pitch, yet again, Luke Follington and Jazz have played a nice 1 2, though the return ball to Luke is a little bit skew with. Though more skew with was the pitch, and it's allowed Luke in, and the Riverside keeper again in the second half has made another terrific save. There was an eventual breakthrough in the second half and it did happen for the team in green. They're breaking down the left hand side here quite well and they've cut the ball in field. There's a shot and it's looped over myself and perfectly into the top corner. It's an unbelievable strike for Riverside though to burst their bubble a little bit is actually offside. We've given the goal, we've been charitable and Riverside have a goal back in though realistically it shouldn't have stood. Not to worry though, we were looking for an immediate response from a set piece here and Riverside have decided to clear their lines. Picking up the ball well is Jazz in midfield who's beaten one man to the ball. He's taken it past two more defenders. He's just steamed into the penalty area and he's buried the effort. It's a great solo goal by Jazz Lepar to give ourselves a 4-1 lead and restore a three-goal lead. Hey, you told him to do something. The team were definitely patchy in the second half, but we were enjoying a good spell here. And Riverside have given the ball away sloppily to Mitchell at the edge of the box. The ball is but inside to the penalty area with Phil putting it out right to Luke. And for a second time, Luke has found the goalkeeper's hands. Again, let's move over to the far side of the pitch. There's a throw in similar to when we scored our third goal to end the first half here. As you can see, the ball goes into the midfielder again that picks up the ball and then their winger has collected the ball. He drives inward, he cuts the ball back and there's a relatively easy finish into an unguarded net to give Riverside a second goal in the game. Though, let's bring up the VAR screen again. When the ball was played to the guy in the penalty area, he was three or four yards offside. It was missed again and we've been charitable to Riverside once more. The home team were definitely feeling some momentum in the game here as Josh is faced up with a Riverside player. He does enough to make sure that he has to go home before Callum puts the ball out wide here. The number five for Riverside then decides to take a shot from range and I've had to backpedal on goal but I've tipped the shot over the bar. Just a few more chances left in the game and we're going to start with the Riverside set piece here. That is eventually loose and collected well by Mitchell. The ball does go out left eventually to Ben here. Ben's got time as the ball is stuck in the ground. He gets in the box. The goalkeeper draws a good save. Then Mitchell collects again. He's had to round one player, though another player has made a good block. In attack for the team now on the right hand side, a throw in has been collected and Joe Sawyer now has the ball. He cuts in and he finds the feet of the team as we're putting the ball from right to left here. Phil then opens up the play, he feeds it into Chris and Chris has a shot and is dragged wide of the mark. In a chaotic cup game, history definitely repeated itself in the EBFL League Cup. It was another away game for the team without a referee and it resulted in a 4-2 win in a cagey condition with the team getting the job done to ensure we've qualified for the quarterfinals of the East Berkshire Football League's Primary Cup competition with the next round due to be played in Feb of 2024. As for the win against Riverside, another hat-trick for Phil Newport who was the top goal scorer in the EBFL heading into the Christmas break as well as a first goal for Jazz Lapar secured our passage into the quarters of the League Cup. Next up on our YouTube channel we have a brace of Sunday League outings in 2023 left to air as the team finished the calendar year with home games against newcomers Barkham United and a regular opposition in Core FC in Reading and District Sunday League's Division 3. Until next time, as ever, believe the hype.